Hello everyone and welcome to game 66 from the TCEC Super Final. It's uh, Stockfish vs. Leela Chess Zero and a lot of you have been asking me in the comments how come I never show a gameplay the, uh, where Stockfish wins. Uh, well, uh, Stockfish has a different approach to games than Leela Chess Zero as Leela is a neural network and uh, usually the games uh, don't... don't uh, seem all that, uh, how, to, how to put it, important to me and uh, not all that interesting. Uh, it's an engine's approach uh, to games and uh, th that's why I rarely cover it. Uh, but every now and then there will emerge a game that will be uh, simply out of this world. When I saw this one, uh, it reminded me of Rubinstein's Immortal uh, game against Rotlevi in 1907, uh, which uh, if you enjoyed this game, you're welcome to check that game. I also covered it on my channel. Uh, but okay, without further ado, let's check it out. As you all know, the openings are pre-arranged, uh, so this time uh, they play what is... Um, well, there's been a lot of fuss about the Queen's Indian defense because Alpha Zero really, really outplayed Stockfish in pretty much every game where Stockfish tried using the uh, the Queen's Indian defense. Uh, but okay, here Leela has the black pieces, so we'll see what happens here. We have d4, knight to f6, uh, c4, e6, knight to f3, and now b6. The Queen's Indian, sorry, b6. The Queen's Indian defense is on the board, and uh, I have to mention uh, that uh, when Leela played this game, uh, this position with the white pieces, Stockfish was able to hold it to a draw uh, with the black pieces. Uh, but okay, g3, uh, the Fianchetto variation, bishop to a6, and now b3. Uh, we have d5, uh, bishop to g2, d captures on c4, now comes knight to e5, and bishop to b4 check. Uh, king goes to f1. This is a well-known line. It's, play, uh, it's been played uh, plenty of times uh, between human players as well. Uh, bishop to, back to d6, as the bishop no longer has any purpose now that the king moved. Uh, and knight captures the pawn back on c4. Uh, we have knight to d5, and now bishop to b2. Uh, we have knight to c6, and here, uh, this is move 10, and uh, when uh, Leela was playing with the white pieces, Leela went for e4 here. But Stockfish goes for a different line. e4 has been played uh, amongst human players as well, uh, the move Leela chose. But Stockfish goes for h4, and it's actually Stockfish that brings a completely new game now uh, for, uh, for us to enjoy. Uh, here Leela goes f5. Most likely as Leela played e4, uh, when Leela played with the white pieces, uh, she wants to prevent Stockfish from pushing e4. Uh, knight b to d2. Uh, we have castles by, uh, by Leela and now king to g1. You don't want this king to be on this diagonal when you finally do push uh, e4. Uh, the knight is nicely placed here to support the, this advancement of the pawn on e4. Uh, now comes b5. Uh, knight captures some d6, c captures some d6, now improving the, the central pawn structure here, and now finally e4. Uh, f captures, oops, sorry about that. Uh, f captures an e4, knight captures an e4, and now queen to d7. Uh, connecting rooks, developing the queen, and now knight to g5. And already uh, there's going to be a lot of action happening now. The knight is on g5, as you can see, uh, black's... Uh, uh, pawn structure uh, uh, in front of the king has already been somewhat compromised, the, uh, the f pawn is missing, and Leela makes further weakening of the king side by playing h6, and Stockfish no longer reacts to this. We have queen to g4, and uh, this queen to g4 is not a peace sacrifice. If Even if the knight was captured, you don't have to play h capture on g5 immediately, you could go bishop capture on d5. You cannot recapture because the queen is unguarded on d7. And after bishop d7, you just go back, and then white pretty much has a, an attack for free. You're just going to open up the h file and uh, win the game. Uh, so, after this queen to g4 move, we have rook to f5 by Leela, uh, blocking off uh, this. And also, the uh, rook is now controlling the knight here, defending the knight on d5. Uh, but still, uh, the knight doesn't move. We have rook to e1 by Stockfish. Now, what's the idea now? Well, now if h captures on g5, now do you see what uh, Stockfish has in, had in mind? Uh, queen captures on f5. This is just awesome. Uh, pawn captures queen and now, sorry, not the king. Bishop captures on d5 with check. Uh, king to h7, now you capture on g5 with a discovered check. King goes to g6 and now rook to e6 check uh, wins the queen. Uh, either you have to give up the queen or if you go king to g5, then comes f4 and rook to g6 will be checkmate. So after this rook to e1 move, uh, Lila goes back. We have knight to f6. 
Uh, and now queen goes to e2. And again, uh, it's not possible to capture the knight because now you just capture and there are uh, so many threats here. You don't have time to recapture here. You would have to give up the knight uh, because of the threat. Uh, bishop captures knight on c6 and the queen captures on e6. So here you just have to play something like d5 to defend the knight. And then after you capture here, like I said, it's not it's not even a peace sacrifice and the white would just be so much better here. The queen is uh, coming uh, into the attack and it will all be over very soon. Uh, so after queen to e2, we have rook to e8 now. Uh, Lila brings this rook to, to help out with the defense of the e6 pawn. And now finally the knight goes back. Uh, here you could capture on e6. Uh, Stockfish for some reason does not go for this line. Knight captures. It seems like a perfectly nice pawn grab. Uh, but still Stockfish thought uh, thought it to be uh, a lesser move than, than what, uh, what Stockfish played. Uh, after rook to e8, uh, first we have knight to e4. Uh, now knight to d5 and now bishop to h3. Uh, the rook is under attack, rook to f7, and now bishop to g4, with the idea of bishop to h5 uh, winning material. Uh, rook f to e7, and now uh, we have rook to h2. Uh, queen to d8, and now we have f3. So, strengthening the position here, uh, we have knight to b8. Uh, e5 was also a possibility here, but uh, first uh, Lila decides to uh, remaneuver the knight. Uh, we have queen to c2, now the queen is very nicely placed here, the queen is eyeing the h7 square and the knight to g5 will once again become a very huge threat. Uh, we have bishop to c8, now Lila uh, really controls the e6 square here, uh, but Stockfish now uh, dives uh, right into the attack. Knight to g5. And now, uh, of course, you still uh, cannot, ca I mean, the threat is queen to h7, this would lead to checkmate, but uh, if you capture, then h captures again, now the rook will support the queen's, uh, 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 the queen's jump to the h7 square. So, after this knight to g5, uh, you still cannot capture the knight. First, knight to f6, it's important that the knight controls the h7 square. Uh, but now comes bishop to h5, and this is just amazing how this bishop keeps uh, wiggling in uh, in black's position. Uh, of course, you still cannot capture it due to the same checkmating idea. Queen h8 will be checkmate. Uh, so after bishop h5, the rook is under attack. Rook to f8 is played, and now even bishop to g6, now taking full control of the h7 square and preparing to uh, bring the bishop all the way back. Uh, so we have knight to a6 now. Uh, if you play something like rook to c7, attack the queen to maybe get, get some activity, doesn't really help you. Queen d3, uh, still uh, everything is uh, uh, in white's favor, doesn't really help you. Rook e7, you'll just get this rook over here, uh, increase the pressure, and the white will just continue building up. So after bishop g6, we have knight to a6 by Leila, and now comes queen to d2. Uh, we have b4, uh, now comes g4. And here comes knight to c7. Lila now decides to give up the b4 pawn to gain some activity. Uh, and Stockfish decides, okay, now it's time to, to grab some pawns. Uh, queen captures on b4, but now knight f to d5. Uh, attacking the queen, we have bishop to h7 first, king to h8, and only now queen back to d2. So, okay, for the price of one pawn, Lila does manage to activate the pieces a bit. Uh, knight to f4. Uh, we have bishop back to b1. So this is uh, just fascinating here in this game. Oh, okay, uh, Rubinstein had had the black pieces against Rotlevi, uh, but it's similar. The bishops were slicing all the way here, but now Stockfish's bishops are slicing all the way here. This is just uh, beautiful how this bishop came all the way from g2 to h3 to g4 to h5 to g6 to h7 and then went all the way back to b1. Uh, but okay, bishop to a6. Now the knight and the rook are doing a nice job covering the e6 pawn, so the bishop can be activated. Uh, we have knight to h7 now, attacking the rook, rook f to f7, and now comes g5. And here you don't really have the option of closing the position with h5 because g6 will win you the rook. The knight is controlling f8 uh, and f6, and the bishop, of course, is guarding f5, so black would lose material here. Uh, so after g5, we have knight to h5. Uh, and now uh, uh, Stockfish simply captures here. We have G captures and now comes D5 with check. Seems like a weird idea. Why would you uh, deliver this check just to allow black to close the position with E5? Uh, but Stockfish has a very nice plan. Queen captures on H6. And it seems like a weird move. Why would you allow rook captures on H7? But this is what Stockfish had in mind. Uh, Lila does play rook captures on H7. And now comes rook captures on E5. And this is just uh, this is just wild. 
Uh, now, after this move, everything uh, everything is just working in White's favor. Everything is all the pieces are in, are in the right place. Uh, both the bishops, the rook, the queen, and the, even the rook on h1. <coughs> Uh, sorry about that, will be a part of the attack. Uh, so what's the point here? Okay, if you capture the rook, then it's game over. Bishop captures on e5 with check, uh, and now you will either capture here and you get a queen captures on h7 checkmate, or you will have to block. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, not capturing, but uh, you could go rook to g uh, king to g8, uh, but then you get bishop captures on h7, rook captures on h7, and now rook g2 check. Knight to g7, and now it's just all over. Uh, rook captures on g7. Uh, king to f8, now queen captures on h7, there's no defense against queen to h8, checkmate. Uh, you, whatever you play, you still you get checkmated very quickly. So this is what happens if you decide to capture the rook. But what about capturing the queen? Surely you can capture the queen. Uh, if you capture the queen, it's a forced line that leads Stockfish into a, into a winning endgame. If rook captures queen, then you get uh, rook captures on h5, uh, delivering a discovered check here. After rook to g7 check, uh, now uh, you block with rook to g2, and now while blocking check, you also attack the pinned piece. Uh, so rook captures on h5, bishop captures on g7 with check, uh, king to g8, you don't have the option of going to h7, you have to go in front of the rook, and now bishop to f6 check wins the queen. Uh, king f8, bishop captures, the knight is under attack, so first rook captures here. Threatening rook to d1, check to win the bishop. Uh, but now just uh, bishop to e4, you attack the rook. Rook to d1, check, king to h2, and now knight to e6. And after the bishop uh, joins the game, now you have this endgame where white has a bishop pair against the bishop and the knight. Both uh, Lila and Stockfish have rooks, uh, but Stockfish uh, is up to... Uh, two passed pawns, which will be winning in the end. Uh, Lila, of course, knows this. So after rook captures on e5, a powerful move, uh, Lila goes for rook to g7 check. So not capturing the rook or the queen, but first delivering rook to g7 check. Uh, and now we have uh, rook to g2. Rook to g5 seems like a nice idea uh, to, to immediately attack the pinned piece from here. Uh, but here rook captures is just winning for black as the knight from h5 also controls the g7 square now. So instead, after rook to g7 check, we have rook to g2, and now rook captures uh, on h5. Sorry, uh, rook captures on uh, uh, h6, uh, finally grabbing the queen. Uh, you don't have uh, enough time to capture on g2 with check, because after king captures, uh, capturing the queen results in mate in one, because uh, both of the bishops are controlling both g7 and h7. So after rook to g2, we have rook captures on h6, and now finally rook captures on h5. Uh, knight to e8, defending the rook, and now bishop captures on g7. Knight captures, rook captures on h6, king to g8, and now once again you will just attack the pinned piece. So rook to h7. Uh, so uh, Stockfish will also win Lila's knight on g7. We have queen to b6 check, king to h1, and now uh, finally king to f8, and the rook captures here. So now we have this position where both Lila and Stockfish have a bishop, but Stockfish has two rooks against the queen, which is almost always favorable, and not only that, Stockfish is up three pawns. Uh, two of those uh, are passed pawns, so that's quite an advantage. Uh, Queen to e3. Alila preferred this position than the one we've shown where it's immediately the endgame where Alila is down just two pawns. But here uh, it's still a queen and the king is somewhat open on h1. So perhaps uh, the game can be saved via some sort of a perpetual check. Uh, we have uh, bishop to e4 now controlling uh, both f3 and d5 pawns. A very nice defensive structure in the center. Queen to e1 check. We have uh, rook to g1 now blocking. Queen to e3 and now rook to h5. Uh, we have king to e7, now rook goes back to g7 with check, king f6, we have rook to g6 check, king to f7, and now rook to h7 check. So slowly but surely, uh, you know, Lila is running out of uh, squares for her king. Uh, king to f8, now comes rook to f6 check. King to g8, and now uh, and now comes, no, not this rook, but rook to e6. And the threat is rook to e8 checkmate. Uh, you cannot, of course, allow this. We have queen to e1 check by Lila, king to h2, and now comes queen to f2 check. King h3, and now not allowing this checkmate, uh, so you pin the rook. The, finally, the king is on h3, so you can pin the rook. Uh, we have rook to c7, forcing uh, Lila to capture here on e6, but first queen to f1 check. King g4, and now bishop captures on e6 with check. We have pawn captures on e6, now creating a very strong passed pawn. 
Uh, queen to g1 check, we have king to h5, and now queen to g3. Still, Lila tries to get something out of the position. If, if Stockfish were to push the pawn immediately, then queen e5 would allow the game to uh, perhaps be saved. After king g4, the king can now block the pawn. And, you know, it's a, it's still a game. Uh, but after this queen to g3 move, Stockfish goes for rook to f7, now preparing to block this check with bishop to f5, uh, which happens, queen e5 check, bishop to f5, and now queen to d5, uh, preparing to meet the push of the pawn with capturing the rook, uh, but also just, you know, making a move and pinning the, the bishop here. Uh, but king to g5 now. We have queen to d2 check, we have f4, and now comes queen to f2, and here uh, there are no more good good uh, defensive ideas for Lila. Here you have a, a forced checkmate. So feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea. It's not it's not all that difficult, especially now that you know that it exists. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it uh, after pausing the video, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, checkmater of neural networks. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop to h7 check. Uh, after this move, uh, Lila Chess 0 resigned the game, and Stockfish created this brilliant, brilliant game that, uh, well, as I said, it, it really just reminded me of, of that Rubinstein's Immortal uh, due to the bishop pair and the, the, the wonderful... Uh, queen sacrifice. Uh, now the only square available to the king is king to h8, and now you get, uh, of course, you want to get to h6 and deliver rook to f8 checkmate, but first you have to do something about queen captures on h4. So here you create a shield for yourself, you push the pawn to h5, and now after uh, a little check, king h6, and now there are no more checks. Uh, the rook is controlling the f4 pawn, and whatever move black makes, it will just be rook to f8 checkmate. Okay, first black will of course block, but either way. So yeah, after bishop to h7 check, uh, Lila chess 0 resigned the game, and really, really just uh, this uh, moment here uh, after this uh, queen captures on h6, rook captures, and now uh, this monstrosity, rook captures on e5. This is just, just beautiful. Uh, so yeah, uh, really uh, an amazing game. Uh, if you haven't uh, seen my video, it, it's a really, really an old video. Uh, Rubinstein's Immortal against Rotlevi in 1907 uh, lasts like four minutes. It will be the first link in the description below if you haven't seen it and, uh, you, and you enjoyed this game. Uh, do check it out. It'll really blow your mind uh, that Akiba Rubinstein, really, really an amazing player also. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I think Lila is still in the lead uh, in the TCEC by one point. I think this is game 70-something 70, 70 now already. We've just seen game 66, but few other games were played. And, uh, you know, we're getting closer and closer to that 100 to, to decide the winner of the TCEC Super Final. And, uh, you know, who knows, maybe the winner will get the challenge Alpha Zero or, or not. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would like to thank Benjamin Forbes, uh, Brian Colling, Milos Knežević, uh, David Kaisa, and Rafael Sol Solars for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content, continuing the Capablanca saga and, you know, doing what we usually do here. Uh, thank you all, and uh, have an excellent rest of your day, and check out the, the Rubinstein's Immortal. See you soon.